Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 39 and we will be talking about a uh, very important topic in linear algebra that is uh, vector uh, spaces. And just to recall from the previous lecture what we have uh, seen for instance this uh, solution set of uh, the homogeneous system of equations A x is equal to 0 that is a very special set. So, the solution set of uh, solution set of this homogeneous system of equations A x is equal to 0. Why that is very special? Because in this set, so let us call this is uh, the set V which uh, contains all the solutions of this equation A x is equal to 0. Then if we take any two elements of this set, let us say uh, x 1 and also we take x 2 from this set that means this a x 1 is 0 and a x 2 is also 0 because the x 1 this vector is also a solution and x 2 is also a solution. So, if we take two elements of this uh, set and if we add them, so if we consider now x 1 plus x 2 and that will be also the solution of this uh, system of equations a x is equal to 0 because of this linear property here we have a x 1 and then a x 2 that is a matrix ve vector product and this is 0 and this is 0. So, we have uh, this x 1 plus x 2 is also a solution and not only this uh, if we take any element of this set and if we multiply by a real number. So, let us say lambda. So, this lambda x will also belong to V because this is again a solution if x, are, x is a solution and then this lambda x because a lambda x will be lambda a x and this a x is a, uh, will give 0. So, lambda into 0 and then we will get the 0 vector. So, here what we have seen in this uh, set which is a, a kind of a special set if we take any two elements of the set and add them that is also uh, an element of the set and if we multiply by a real number to this uh, element of this set, uh, this new uh, uh, element is also uh, an element of this uh, set V. So, we are going into this direction that what do we call these such special sets and that is exactly the vector spaces coming into the picture. So, here this vector spaces they are the special set here. So, a vector space again here we need to define uh, the vector space over R for instance and this R can be uh, more general like uh, here we have considered this set of real numbers, uh, this can, can be a set of complex numbers and in more general cases what we call uh, the field. So, it can be any field, but we are not going to discuss that into detail. So, most of the time we will take this vector space over this R because uh, with this set V one uh, another set must be associated which we have taken here this R set of real numbers. So, this vector space uh, is a set V of elements and called vectors. So, that is another point here I would like to mention that the elements of this uh, vector space V will be called vectors. So, they can be matrices, they can be functions depending on what type of elements this V contain, but the elements of this V we will call vectors. So, a little more general definition here and together with two binary operations. So, we need other than this set here uh, V which we will call vector space, we need this uh, set R which we have taken and then two binary operations which we call this vector addition and this is scalar multiplication. So, what do we have? We have this set V, we have another uh, set which we have taken uh, uh, here the set of real numbers and then we will have this vector addition which we have to define uh, with this uh, set V and we have uh, scalar multiplication. So, we need to define these four uh, four things to define this vector space. So, the main set V here 
one another set set of real numbers or the set of complex number and two algebraic operations which we call vector addition and scalar multiplication. So, having all these here now uh, when do we call this uh, set V a vector space when the following axioms hold. So, what are these axioms the first one is that if we take uh, two elements u and v from this uh, set v and if we add them the new uh, element should also belong to to this set v. So, that is the uh, additive closure property of this set that we take any two elements and do this vector addition which has to be defined for this given uh, set v. Then this uh, addition of this u and v must belong to the set v. Another property that this lambda times u. So, the lambda which is called a scalar because lambda belongs to this a set of real numbers or a little more general this set of complex numbers we can talk about, but we are restricting to the set of real numbers here. So, this lambda times u that is the scalar multiplication. So, here this uh, scalar lambda is multiplied to this vector u. So, this lambda u must also belong to v that is another a closer property which we call with respect to this scalar multiplication. So, for any u the lambda u must also be there in the set of v and these are called the closer properties of the of the uh, set and there are many more properties which are not so important uh, in our discussion, but we need to just state them for completeness because most of our examples all these properties will trivially uh, follow, but these two properties are the most important properties uh, which we call the closer properties. So, here the third one that uh, u plus v must be equal to u v plus u for any element of this uh, set v and this is the uh, commutativity property of this these vectors. The another one that uh, here u plus first we add uh, uh, v plus w or first we add this u plus v and then w the result must be the same and this is called the associativity property. Again so we have uh, uh, this existence of the zero vector. So, what how do we define the zero vector? So, there must be a zero vector in this set v which we are uh, concerned now. So, here this 0 must be there and what is the property of 0 that if we add this 0 to any element of this uh, set v then that element will, will remain as it is. So, this is called the 0 vector and this must be there in the set v. Uh, another one. So, for uh, each u, so for each element of this uh, uh, set v there must exist a vector v which is denoted by minus u. So, this is just a notation here minus u the negative of u such that when we add this u and this negative of u uh, we must get the 0 vector which already exists there in the in the set. The another one again this is a, a property with respect to this scalar multiplication that we are multiplying here mu with uh, u or we first multiply lambda and mu in, in this set of real numbers and then we multiply to this u the result must be same for all lambda and mu from uh, the set of real numbers and this u from this set uh, v and this is again this associativity property with respect to this scalar multiplication. And further we have this lambda times v plus uh, u. Uh, must be equal to lambda u plus uh, lambda v and for all lambda and for all u v from uh, this set v. This is called the distributive uh, property uh, of this uh, uh, of these scalars and, and the vectors and then we have this lambda plus mu if we multiply to u then this uh, should be equal to lambda u plus plus mu, mu uh, times u and this should hold for all lambda uh, mu from r and u uh, from v. So, this is again this distributivity property of, of these uh, scalars and vectors. And the last ones that for each u from this uh, set v 
we should have that 1 into u, 1 is the identity element uh, in R. So, which is, which is the number R in case of this real number set of real numbers. So, this if you multiply uh, u to this 1, so this is again here the scalar multiplication which must be defined for each uh, uh, the, the set here and is must be equal to u uh, and this is um, again kind of uh, uh, a property which all the elements of this u must must satisfy. So, we have so many properties, but, uh, but, but as I said uh, at the beginning that these two properties are most important here, these are the closer properties uh, that u plus v must be there in the set and lambda times uh, u. Uh, must be there in the set for all u and for all uh, lambda uh, from r. So, with these two properties and there are other properties as well which we have to keep in mind like the existence of this 0 vector, existence of this negativity and all other these uh, distributivity property, associativity property etcetera must hold for this set v. Then we call this uh, set v as a vector space. So, now we go through uh, some of the examples where we will understand now better what is this uh, vector space. So, here the first example we are considering that is the vector space uh, R n over R. So, what is the R n how the elements of this R n looks like. So, this R n is this set of all this ordered uh, n tuples means we have the elements of this type a 1, a 2, a 3, a n and all these a's are from the real number. So, this R n the elements of R n will have these n elements uh, the n components in each element of this of this set. And here we need to define again this vector addition and scalar multiplication then only we will say that this is a vector space with respect to this scalar multiplication, uh, this vector addition and this set, uh, uh, set of real number r which we are considering. So, here the vector addition and this scalar multiplication is defined uh, as usual. So, when we take these two elements here a 1, a 2, a n and b 1, b 2, b n from this set v and when we add them. So, the new element uh, will be just the component wise addition here. So, first a 1 plus b 1 will be the first uh, element uh, first component of this new element here a 2 plus b 2 and so on a n plus uh, this b n. So, that is the, the, the how the addition works in, in this uh, particular case and for the uh, multiplication the scalar multiplication. So, when we multiply by this scalar lambda to this a 1, a 2, uh, a 3, a n. In that case, we should get here now uh, the, the new element will be just uh, the multiplication of this lambda to each of the element of this, uh, this element uh, or this uh, member of this set V and for, <coughs> for all lambda from R. So, this is how the vector addition and the scalar multiplication is defined for this set and what we can easily now observe those two closer properties at least because all others uh, uh, are trivial in this case again like for instance the 0 element will be when all these components are 0 and so on the negative elements will be when we put the minus sign in front of each. So, that will be the negative element of a given uh, element. So, all those uh, existence all this commutativity property etcetera one can easily verify. So, again what is also important the closer properties which are again trivial here. So, when we add two elements here we are getting a new element and that also uh, belongs to this R n because this is again element of element in this R n. So, this closer property with respect to vector, vector addition uh, uh, is satisfied and also for the scalar multiplication. So, this new element here lambda a 1, lambda a 2 and so on lambda a n this also belongs to uh, the set here R n. So, the both the closer properties are satisfied all other properties one can easily check that they are also satisfied. So, this uh, vec uh, this R n this set here R n is a vector space and we can talk about n we can take any integers here. So, the R 
over R is a vector space, R2 uh, over R is a vector space, etc. Uh, it, is, it is clear now uh, whatever n we take here R3 for instance, uh, it is also a vector space over R. Well, so now going to the next uh, example here, we will consider uh, the polynomial space. So, here we are considering this p and t again over r as I said we will be restricting to a set of real number here. So, this p and t, so how the elements of p and t look like? So, p and t denotes the set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. So, all polynomial, this is a set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n and uh, how these polynomials uh, look like, they are of this kind a 0 plus a 1 t plus a 2 t plus and so on a s t power s and this s is less than or equal to n because we are talking about the set of all such polynomials. So, here the constants also belong to this, the linear uh, polynomial belongs to this quadratic et so, uh, and so on depending on this n here. So, uh, this is a set of all polynomials of uh, degree less than or equal to n for given n and all these a's here are just the real numbers. So, in this case when uh, we have uh, polynomials now, so our vectors are these polynomials and now again if you look at the closer properties here, uh, the closer properties are satisfied because if we take any two elements from this set. So, for example, we have taken like uh, one element here which I am calling p 1 t and which we can denote again here this with a's. So, this is one element. So, let me take this n. So, t power n. This is one element of this uh, set here. Uh, the polynomial space which we are talking about. Uh, now, let me take the another one which I, I can denote by this b 0. So, b 1 t and and uh, here the degree can be n or it can be less than n. So, b and t n. So, these are the two elements from the same set and when we add these two. So, p 1 uh, t plus this p 2 t how the addition works in this set. It is just we have to add uh, the corresponding coefficients here. So, a 0 plus b 0, these were the constant terms and with the t we have this a 1 plus this b 1. With this t square we will have this a 2 plus b 2 uh, and with this t n we will have a n plus b n. So, this is uh, the new polynomial now after this addition, but naturally when a 0 and this b 0 are in R, the sum is also in R. Similarly, this a 1 b 1 will be in R and a n plus b n will be also in R. So, here this is a new uh, polynomial which uh, belongs to again this uh, uh, set this p and t. So, how this is uh, I mean now one can see this closer property with respect to the addition here. Similarly, when we take uh, this p uh, t uh, for from this uh, from this set p and t and if you multiply by any scalar here the lambda times this p t. So, what will happen the lambda will be multiplied to this a 0 lambda will be multiplied to a 1 the lambda will be multiplied to this to this a s here and this new polynomial will be again uh, an element of this uh, p and t. So, again we have the closure property with respect to this scalar multiplication, we have the closure property with respect to the addition and this addition is defined in this way which we have explained the multiplication is defined in, in this way for this set. So, this uh, polynomial space p and t over r is a vector space which we have seen in this example. The next one we are talking about the matrix space here the M the set of all matrices of uh, uh, of order this M cross N we are talking about. So, why uh, in this case it is a matrix space uh, again this is a this is a vector space because uh, if we take if we take two uh, uh, two matrices of order M and N. So, let us consider this 2 by 3 matrices for instance just for simplicity. So, for uh, 2 by 3 matrices, so we have taken uh, one element uh, like uh, A, B, R, C and then the D, E and F. This is uh, the one element we have taken from this 
set we have taken another element of this set which we are denoting by a 2 b 2 c 2 and uh, a 3 d 3 d 2 and e 2 and f 2 these are the two elements for example from this set here m uh, 2 by 3 uh, all, uh, all matrices of order uh, 2 by 3. So, when we add these two matrix A and B and we can take any two matrices, the result will be again this matrix of uh, order 2 by 3 and we will be just adding these components here A 1 plus uh, B 2 this B 1 uh, A 1 plus A 2 B 1 plus uh, B 2 and so on. So, this will be again a matrix of uh, order uh, 2 by 3 and this is also over this R set of real numbers we are talking about. So, here these are all real numbers uh, when we add them they will be also real number and the new matrix will also belongs to uh, this set here m 2 by 3. And also the scalar multiplication. So, when we uh, multiply any member of this uh, set here by lambda the, the new matrix uh, will be just multiplied. Uh, by lambda each component will be multiplied by lambda and again this new matrix will be also uh, a member of this uh, set here m 2 3. So, here what we have seen that this matrix spaces uh, of order this m cross n is also uh, a vector space. So, another example which is uh, also a very important example from the system of linear equations. So, the solution of this A x is equal to 0, this form a vector space and how uh, it forms a vector space. So, we take this set V here x belongs to this R n and it satisfy this A x is equal to 0. We have discussed at the very beginning of uh, today's lecture uh, about this set, this is a special set only. So, this is called uh, null space and as discussed before because here also those closure properties are satisfied and uh, the elements are from R n, R n is a vector space already we have seen. So, this uh, elements of this V belongs to R n and R n is a vector space. So, naturally all the properties which we uh, discuss they are satisfied. Uh, automatically about this distributivity, commutivity all are valid here because they, these elements actually belong to R n and R n is a vector space. And about the closure property, so whenever we have taken the two elements here x 1 and x 2 from this set uh, set V. So, naturally this uh, the sum x 1 plus x 2 that is the property of this uh, solution here that this a uh, this x 1 x 2 will be also the solution because a times uh, x 1 plus x 2 will be 0 and also a times the lambda x 1 or lambda x 2 uh, with any element you can multiply by lambda that will be also 0. So, that is uh, special for this homogeneous system when we have the right hand side 0 if we do not have this right hand side 0 if it is a non homogeneous system we do not have uh, this property uh, these two properties uh, for example, uh, valid uh, for, for the solution of uh, non homogeneous system of equations. So, for the homogeneous system of equations the solution set is a vector space and this vector space has a special name which we call as null space that is for the space coming into the picture. So, this is called the null space of uh, the matrix A. Note that this V, this set V is a subset of uh, is a subset of this R n and forms a vector space and therefore, this is called also vector subspace. So, we will be talking about that soon that what are these vector subspaces. So, this is uh, for instance a uh, vector subspaces because this is a vector space and this is a subset of another uh, vector space R n and therefore, we call this as a vector subspace. So, here again this what are the subspaces here. So, let V be a vector space and let W be a subset of V. So, V is a vector space and W is another subset of V and if V W is also a sub uh, also a vector space in that case we call that W is a subspace if this W itself is a vector space over the same 
uh, the set of uh, these real numbers uh, with respect to the same operations uh, what were done in, in the vector space V. Then this W is called a vector subspace. The criteria for identifying the subspaces is much easier now and we do not have to worry about all the properties which we have discussed for defining the vector space. And uh, here we will be talking about only the closer properties because those are important now all others will be trivially uh, satisfied. So, basically when we check whether a given uh, subset is a vector space or not what we have to check we have to check these closer properties. We take the two elements any two elements the sum the addition of these two must belong to this subset and also the lambda u must belong to this subset and that is enough to, to check that the given space given vector space is a, is a subspace. So, what are the trivial subspaces? So, there are some examples now of the subspaces here the set 0 itself. So, if we take just the 0 element of a vector space that will form also a vector space because of the closer properties. For example, you take uh, the element this 0 and add to the 0 you will get 0 and we multiply by any scalar to the 0. Uh, the element will remain as a 0. So, this is a vector space because all these closer properties are satisfied and the whole set V itself uh, we can call as a vector subspace of the of the vector space V. Another example here when we take this uh, set U A B C and all these A B C are equal. So, basically we have taken the elements when all these uh, components are equal and this uh, naturally the elements belong to this R 3 R 3 is a is a vector space. And this is also a subspace of R 3 the reason is again clear if we take take two elements uh, from this uh, set u. So, here this belongs to u because all three are equal and if we take b uh, uh, this is also uh, an element from this u. And now this uh, closer properties we need to basically focus on if we add uh, the 2 here. So, what we will get a plus b and a plus b and a plus b. So, this new element here all the components are equal again this will also belong to the same set u or we multiply by the lambda to any element here the new element will be also lambda a lambda a. So, all three components are equal and that, that uh, that is the reason it must belong to this u again. So, these closer properties are, are satisfied for this set u which is uh, a subspace of uh, of now of R 3. Example 2. So, if we take uh, here the x 1 x 2 and x 1 is greater than equal to 0 x 2 is greater than equal to 0. So, here we are talking about this positive. So, both the components are non negative here x 1 is greater than 0 here also this greater than 0. And the question is whether this v uh, forms a vector space and, and the answer is, is no because if we take one element here and the closer property says that the lambda times this uh, v must be there. And if we take lambda minus 1 for example, so the minus 1 into the this uh, element from v which are uh, having this non negative uh, components, but when we multiply with the minus sign it will become minus x 1 minus x 2 and this will not belongs to uh, this set v. So, here this closer property uh, is not satisfied uh, like here I have stated again the minus 1 when we multiply to any element here that will not belong to v because the v has the property that both are non negative. So, this is one example where we can see that uh, this does not form a vector space though here the this is a subset of this r square. Uh, the last example here for this subspace we consider the vectors of this form s plus 4 t 3 s minus t and 5 s plus t 2 t this type of vectors and this s and t they can take any any real number. So, now the question is uh, whether this set uh, uh, this uh, set of these vectors form a subspace in R 4. So, R 4 because there are 4 uh, components here of this vector. So, they are they belongs to R 4. Now, the question is whether this is a subspace of the R 4 or not. 
So, here now this it is easy to consider now in this way. So, our vector was uh, s plus 4 t 3 s minus t 5 s plus t and 2 t which we have written in this uh, in this format here. So, s here 1 3 and 5 uh, the 0 in the last component and t is the 4 minus 1 1 and 2 here. So, in this special form we have written and now one can check easily the closure properties. So, if we take any two elements of of this of this set here that means in the two elements the, these numbers will change so in one we have taken for example one element is 1350 and uh, the uh, i mean with some other other t here so this is one element of of this set because the elements are of this type uh, in this set the another one we can take with some other number 1350 with s2 and this t2 here this 4 minus 1 1 2. So, this is another element of the set and when we add these two elements when we add these two elements. So, what will be added here s 1 plus s 2. So, this will be again another real number here this will be added as t 1 plus t 2 into this. So, this new vector will be also a vector of this uh, set which we are talking about and to any uh, member of this set if we multiply by lambda. So, it will be lambda s here will be lambda t and again these are the real number. So, uh, this uh, the new vector will also belong to the, the same set. So, the both the closure properties are satisfied uh, for this set and hence this will also form a vector space of R. Uh, 4. So, this is a vector space of R 4. What is left with in the following lectures we will learn that uh, this is a, a smaller set naturally of this R 4 and now how to how to quantify this in terms of what in terms of kind of dimension or or, or some other criteria. So, that we will be uh, also talking about in in, in following lectures. And now coming to the conclusion. So, for the vector space the most important properties were these additive uh, closure and this uh, scalar um, uh, closure here. So, u plus v must belongs to v and lambda u must belong to v. These were the closure properties the most important properties of the uh, vector spaces and we have seen several examples uh, including the space vector spaces vector subspaces. So, these are the references used uh, for preparing the lectures and uh, thank you for your attention.